Here we go. Welcome, everybody. It is the 70s class on Wednesday, 1230. And today we're doing If by David Gates and his band, Bread. Um, I also want to make an announcement before we actually get started to join me for a recording class. And it will not only be about recording songs with the, the your disc and stick and your CD player, but it is also going to be um, embellishing on saving presets. And if you missed Robert's fabulous class on saving presets, please go back to September 2nd variety class and, and pick that up because I'm kind of going to be going after, you know, taking some questions from, from things that he did in that class. So that would be a very good review. If you did not get a chance to watch it, I suggest you do that. And then join me. It's going to be in store and on Zoom, 1 o'clock on Friday. So please join me for that. Love to have you, and I welcome all kinds of questions. So we'll, we'll have a good time. All right, let's get into today's song. What do we know about it? We always got to do this. This is what makes the song kind of fun. 1971, this was originally popularized by David Gates and his band called Bread. The song charted at number four on the Billboard Hot 100 and number one on the United States Easy Listening Chart. Now, you're never going to believe who actually did a recording of this. Telly Savalas. You remember this, Telly Savalas? Telly Savalas was the bald guy with the lollipop in his mouth. Yeah. <laughs> he recorded a mostly spoken version which, which reached number one in the United Kingdom, believe it or not, on the singles chart for two weeks in March of 1975. I find that mildly hilarious. <laughs> and it even reached number 12, oh, here comes Ron, on the United States Easy Listening chart. Wow, that's pretty funny. Now, it was also done by Julio Iglesias, which I find a little bit more credible. <laughs> And he covered If on his 1984 album called um, 11 1100 Bel Air Place. So for those of you who like Julio Iglesias, he did a, a version of this song. So you might want to check that out on YouTube. All right. Now, it's, it's got a little bit of a road map. So let's do that first. Get your highlighters out. I am going to give you a very nice introduction. I tried to make it as exact as possible. Actually, if you've got some of the larger instruments and some of the newer instruments, you might even have some, some better sounds to make it work even better than this. But this, this actually worked out pretty good. Then we're going to go to page 148 in the book, and we're going to play all of page 1. But if you notice, the last line is the first ending. And it continues to the top of page 149, the second line of 149, and then before the last measure there, that's where it stops. So you have to follow that first ending for two and a half lines. That's a long time. So take your marker and mark the dots. And where are they sending you back to? The beginning of the song. So you want to mark those dots too, because your eyes will follow the colors a lot easier than if you just have to look to see where you're going. Now, going to, to the second ending is probably the hardest part because now you're going to do the second verse. Line one, line two, line three, line four, and where are we going? That's where you need to put, oh, here comes Helen. That's where you need to put a little colorful two at the end of line four, meaning you're going to look for the second ending. And the second ending is the last measure of the second line on the next page. So make sure you put the same color and just trace over that two so you know the second time I'm going from here all the way over to here. It's not an easy jump. And if you're not sure where you're going, you're going to stumble. And then you just finish the song. So that's the hardest part, knowing that that first ending is just ridiculous long. You go back to the beginning, play to the end of line four, make sure you mark that so you can jump over to the end of the second line. Any questions about the roadmap? Okay. Um, there's lots and lots of ways to play this song. 
Um, it sounds very nice on 70s love song. I used tempo, I think 84 is what I used. Um, it sounds good on guitars 4-4, four, four, those of you that have the pianist and guitarist backgrounds. On the smaller instruments, it's the smooth guitarist. Make sure you put your drummer on for that. Strings 101 always sounds good. Smooth piano 4-4 four, four, under soft and easy is also very good. Or you could go under soulful 4-4, four, four, which is gospel. Sounds good too. Now, I went back and listened to the original. And I came up with a set of five presets. And again, this is not because my arrangement is so doggone good. This is so that you learn where some of these features are on your organ so that you can push the buttons and save the presets. Remember, we're going to talk about that again on, on Friday in the workshop, saving presets. And it, then you can start making your own arrangements. But you have to know where some of these things are. This is also going to turn you into an active listener because you have to listen to the original and see what is it doing, what does it have, and what doesn't it have. Listen to the bass. Listen to the drummer. Listen to some of the sounds that are in this. Okay, when I, when I first watch this video, what do I see? I see a guy strumming a guitar. So I'm looking for something where it's going to have some guitars in the background. So I actually chose soft and easy guitars at 84. Now I'm going to play it the way I have it right now. And then I want you to listen to hear what did I do that was different. Where did I add things? Where did I take things out? I want you to be an active listener and listen to what I did. And yes, I'll post this on Patreon if you like it. We'll go over what I did. But let me play it first, starting with the introduction. Here we go.
Okay, did you like it? Very pretty. Yeah? Okay. All right. So, what did I do? First of all, did you follow the roadmap okay? If there's yeah, anybody stuck on, on that. that. Well, you said follow the uh, notes. I, I did, but I goofed up. You goofed up? Okay. The second verse, I forgot to go to the other. Aha. Uh -huh. Aha. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's the trickiest part of the song. Yeah. Yeah. At the end of line four, make sure that number two that you write at the end is big enough so you know exactly where you are going to that second ending. And you got to prepare for that. You got to go, this is the second time I'm playing this, so I'm going to have to jump a long way to that second ending. It can trick you, so you got to be very careful with that. Anybody else mess up on that? Hmm. Yeah, that's a little bit hard. That's a, this is a harder... It's a harder roadmap. Now, what's funny is that the symbols always mean the same things over and over and over again. The problem is, if you have a first ending that's so long, you have to know where that second ending goes to. And that's, that's the hard part. You go back and you don't even remember if you're on the first ending or the second ending, and you have to make sure you jump to the right place at the right time. All right, now what actually is happening, like on that introduction and when I did this upper keyboard, what I'm using is some very interesting sounds to give me this, this. I'm using a combination of three synthesized sounds. Now some of you with the newer organs, I think you can even find some, some better ones. You have to go into your geniuses and scroll until you get to some of these extra synthesized sounds at the end of the genius and then try a couple of them together. Um, it's, I really think it's a guitar with a flanger on it, but I don't have that in here. So if any of you have a flange guitar, try it and see if it gives you that underwater type of a sound. And if you listen to the original, you'll hear that. It's actually a guitar with a flange. So what I'm doing is I'm combining several different sounds. And you will have all of that written right here. Now, if you notice, on the introduction, did I have drums? No. I did have drums, but not a lot of them. OK? I didn't have a bass. The bass is what I turned off. So on that first one, make sure you turn your bass off. I also turned off the genie, which is something that I normally don't do. I'll normally turn off the Orc Plus. So don't forget, your Orc Plus is nice in its own right as well as the genie in its own right. So if I turn on just the soft and easy with everything, that's your soft and easy guitars. What I did is turned off the bass and then turned off the genie. So it just gave me like one person strumming a guitar. I could have switched it. I could have done the genie by itself. And that would have worked too. But I kind of like the Orc Plus better. And that's all I did. Um, and then I had to choose my sounds. And I'm using, and I have the numbers in here as well. I am using um, upper, the upper genius, which is a tab. I'm using the extra synth sci-fi which is number 312. Why am I giving you numbers? Because you can scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll, or you can just go to your keypad, touch the number that I give you, 312, and then put it where I'm telling you to put it. Oh. So I would just go 312, touch the upper genius, and boom, there it is. That's the hmm. easiest way to find your sounds. Dawn. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I had the marquee down up, down here, so that's huh? the ba basic button, right? Instead of the genius thing. Correct. It, the basic, and uh, you would turn off the basic button. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And I do have that marked on here. I remembered you guys this time. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I did. And your tabs, you're going to have a lower or, or a lower. I changed the lower sound as well to that extra synth sci-fi, so I got a little bit of that sound in the background when I played the chords. So if you wanted to know exactly what that sounds like, I'm going to turn off my uppers here and I'm going to turn, I'm just going to leave that extra sci-fi on and see what that sounds like. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, that's that's got that synthesized sound, and that was pretty close to what I wanted. But then I went up and I, I found the red orchestral geniuses, and I changed both of them. And one of them I changed to extra synth soft rain, which is number 302. The easiest way is to just go 302 and put it. Now, if you're on the marquee, you put it in one of your one of your orchestral sounds, you have two of them, and then just make sure upper on is on. Easy, easy. And that one sounds like this. Mm -hmm. It's got a little bit of rain going on there too. So combine that with the sci-fi and it sounds pretty good together. Now I did a third one in Geni Red Genius 2 and in the marquee, grand marquee, what you're going to do is find the second red orchestral sound and change it to extra synth goblin number 308. Of course, like again, try some of the extra ones that you have in those bigger organs and see if you can find a combination of, of two together, maybe. And that sounds <coughs> like this. That's called goblins. It gives you some weird stuff going on in the background. Hear it? Yeah. yeah. It gives. That's about as flangy as I can find in this particular instrument. So now I'm going to combine one and two. Okay. Both of those sounds. Make sure they're on upper and then your upper tab sound. And all together, it gives you its own sound. So yeah, if you're on a, on, on a newer organ than the Imperial, I want you to search in that extra synth section and see what other sounds you have and see what else is there and try combining a couple of them. Mm -hmm. Just put one in sound one, one in the second sound and put them both on upper and then try them together and see what you think until you get a nice combination. And you can do two or three sounds together and see what you get because you're looking for that underwater type of a thing. And if you're not sure what I'm saying, go back to YouTube or have Alexa play bread if. Now, you can't just say play if. Whoop. Sorry. <laughs> you can't just do that because there are m way many ifs. The other, there's, there's a second one that was done in the 30s, I believe. Um, if they made me a king, da 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 That's called if. There's a lot of other songs that are called If as well because you cannot copyright a title. So when you're looking up in YouTube or you're looking up or you're asking Alexa, make sure you state who sings it or what year it was right. so that she knows exactly which one to play for you. Right. Okay? But listen for that underwater sound. It's like a flange sound. And see if you can recreate that by combining several sounds. And I know those of you who are in my morning class, this is kind of what I'm talking about, designing sounds and then being able to save them to a preset. Right. So we'll, we're going to get into that more and more so that we can get into more of an authentic sound for our song. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't feel like doing that, guess what? Just push rhythm preset and find one and play. <laughs> and just have a good time with it. And then your bass actually comes in. That's for your, your A1, A1 upper, and I put a little U, is for the entire introduction. And when you start the lyrics, if a picture, you're still in A1, but now you're going to use the lower keyboard, which ab absolutely happens to be a flute. And a flute, in my opinion, is the closest to David Gates' voice that I can find. And a lot of 70s songs use flutes, so I tried that. Okay. okay. Okay, so what else did I do? Once you have everything the way you like it, and I'm not using an introduction, by the way, because I'm doing my own introduction with the chords. And again, you can skip that too and just use one of the introductions that are here. That's what makes Lowry so easy. 
So then once you get this all set up, you save that to A1. You're going to play A1, upper for the introduction, and put an L, put an A1L by your lyrics, because you're going to start on the lower for if a picture paints. Then in line two, no, I'm sorry, line three, I can't count. One, two, three. <laughs> line three, where it says, if a face. That first measure in that rest, you want to put A to L, lower. So you're going to go to A2, and you're going to stay in the lower keyboard. You're just pushing the new button. And now you're going to play until you get to the first ending. Song? Have you put, yes. Put a one and a two? Pardon? I can't hear you. Say it again. Where do you put A1L? A1L starts with the lyrics at the top of the page. That's U. A1U at the top nope, of the A1U. page. Nope, A1U is the intro. That's the page that I'm going to send you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good question. A1U is the intro that I've written out for you. A1L, lower, starts with the lyrics if a picture paints. Okay. Got it? Okay, Cheryl, good. Then, that, then line three, first measure, right in between you know, where that rest is. Then you want to just touch A2 and stay on the lower. Stay on the lower. Because what did I do for A2? You can hear hey, Dawn, it. What did, did I do for A2? Did you put in there on A2? Nope. A no? Nope. A2. I added the bass. Okay. I added the bass. You knew I added something, so that's good. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I added the bass and then saved everything to A2. I'm staying on the lower keyboard with that nice flute. I just want that bass to come in right there. Then when we get to the first ending, line five, first measure in the rest, right before you get to and when. Now you're going to put A to U. So you don't have to have tons and tons of presets. You just have to know where to go up and down. So now you're going to go A to U, and you're going to play those underwater sounds for for the chorus and when my love for life is running dry you come and pour yourself on me all right now at the end of the first ending we're on page 149 second line second measure in the rest right before you get to if a uh, to go back you're going to push a three and put a u because now you're going to stay on the upper keyboard what did I do for A3? A bunch of stuff. So A3 is here. So you, what you do is you set up A2, memorize it, and then follow the directions to memorize A3. You should still be on guitars. You're going to press rhythm preset or vintage number four, auto bass one, genie, orc plus, or basic orc plus, and drum variation. Okay, so then you're going to do tabs. I'm going to tell you exactly what to put in your tabs, exactly what to do with your red orchestral sounds, and then you're going to reach up and turn a duet off. So all of this will be here. So I did make some changes. That is probably the most drastic change is going from A2 to A3. So when you're done with the first ending, Whoops, let's see, A2, I should be on, yeah. Now I'm going to go to A3 upper and listen to all the changes. Strings. I also added stuff over here. So you've got Genie and Oric Plus and a drum variation. So I'm adding stuff to make it fuller because now I'm adding the entire string section for the third for the second verse if a man could be two places so you start that with your pickup notes at the end of line one I'm sorry the first ending at the end of the first ending if a uh, so you want a three u to be in that rest 
right before you go back to your dots. Then you're going to play line one, line two, and do you see where you changed it to A2L? Same place you're going to go to A4U. So you, it's A4 now, but you're going to stay on the upper keyboard because now, Joanne, you're exactly right. I'm adding a duet. Uh-huh. So when I go to go from three to four, I added the duet. So I get this great big string section. And I'm going to play that for line three, line four. Remember, now we go to the second ending. So pop over to the next page, second ending. And in that first measure of the second ending, which is the last measure on line two, in the rest, you're going to write A5 U. So now you're going to go to a new preset to finish the song. And what I'm doing on A5 is I'm Actually, I'm gonna, and it's all written here, you're going to go back to A2, you're going to add the genie, add the drum variation, turn on some strings over here, um, and then you're going to put your flute, which was previously in the lower keyboard, and you're going to put it in the upper keyboard. And that's, you just have to go to your commands, find out where your flute is, which sound is your flute on, and put upper on change the command. So now I'm having my underwater sounds and my flute sounds all in the same keyboard to have the biggest sound. I also have on a duet to make it big so that your second ending is going to be the biggest sound of all. Now, yes, there's a duet on, but I'm still using full fingered chords to change. I'm going to give you extra notes underneath that long held G. If you leave it and just do a one finger, because you've got the duet on, every time you change a chord, it will change for you. It's just not going to be as full. Here, change. But it's only changing one note. So if you're adding the extra notes, it sounds fuller. And then I did a fade out at the end. OK? All right. Speaking Don't worry. It's all here. Now, do you need to do all of this stuff? No. Do you need to do any of this stuff? No. Uh-uh. You don't. I do have extra Don. chords for you as well. Yep. Go ahead, Connie. Don? Yeah. Yeah. What if you just put on the AOC for that last line? You could. AOC. You could. If you've got time to do that, yeah, you could actually, that whole last, that whole last ending can be on AOC. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Don, I'm trying to remember the, um, the fade out is hitting two buttons down by the lock, but I don't. I could not get it. Okay. Your fade out is probably, now you, you have to look for where it has the little line and it's going to say fade. It's probably between intro one and intro two. Or if you, if you only have know. one, it's going to be between intro and start stop. Where is it on the marquee? On the marquee, it's going to be over in its own spot. And it says fade? It'll say fade in out. Oh, okay. Yep, you've got it. You've got a complete button designated just for fading. I'm pretty okay. sure. Okay, I have to check it out. If you do not have, yeah, the, the Imperial has a separate button for fade in and out. Some of you, you have to push two buttons at a time. Some of you, it's again, it's the intro ending and intro ending two, one and two together. But it will have 
a little connecting line in between there and it will say fade. So you have to read and you got to look for it. Finally found it. You found I, it. Woohoo, success. I, was, I tried it on another song and I I I, I remember I had to hit two buttons but I did not. Mhm. Mm okay. Thank See? you. See? Marie can go home now. She learned one thing. Oh, she is home. That's right. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> the marquee has a two-button push. Maybe the marquee. Does the marquee have a two-button push? It yeah. might. Yeah. Yes, it does. Marquee. Okay. Oh. Okay. The Rialto has a two-button push. Okay. Oh. So you have every every instrument is a little bit different. So you got to find out which two buttons. But don't forget to read, and it's going to have a line that connects them underneath, and it will have the word fade underneath there. So you have just read, 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 read. It'll always tell you where it is and then just remember where it is but you have to push both of them yes if you're going to fade out they both have to go at the same time yes otherwise you start intro one or intro yes two. <laughs> yes <laughs> or the or, or that first ending I've done that second before. Ending. Go. yeah that that's exactly what happens yep <laughs> yep see if, if that's the one thing you learned today woohoo success yeah <laughs> yeah this is all about getting you to find what where your buttons are and what they do for you that's all this does and if you like the arrangement then you have now you'll have a nice little arrangement in your organ that you can save to a stick or you can record it and again come to my recording session on friday in store and on zoom one o'clock florida time all right questions about where the setups the presets actually go Gone. You know, yes. they don't have to use the fade in or fade out. Just use your foot pedal. You could just use your foot pedal as well. Uh huh. Yeah. Yep. Just pull back on your foot pedal. The problem yeah. is with a lot of these bigger organs, even if you have it back all the way, it doesn't yeah. really bring it down far enough. Then you have okay. to go over to your master button and bring your master all the way okay. down. Okay. Well, that's the other way because then when I hit the stop, it's still abrupt, even though it's very close. Yeah, you don't want to just hit. Yeah, if you're if you bring your foot down and you're still hearing it, and then hit stop, it's you you'll hear it. So you bring your foot back if you're not using your fade in or button. Bring your foot back on the foot pedal, and then when you get too low, as low as it goes, now go to your master volume and just do the down, 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 down till the sound goes away. Then you can hit your stop button. That's the other way to do it. Or if you have an instrument that doesn't have a fade out button, that's the way to do it. Now remember, when you go to play your next song, make sure you push that master button back up because you're going to start playing and there's not going to be any sound there. <laughs> OK, any, any questions about where the presets went? I think I was pretty clear on that. All right, good. Good. Let's do some extra chords because you I got had it. five presets, right? Pardon? Five. Yes, yeah. five presets. And then I just went up and down. Yep. Extra chords. Why? Because I can. <laughs> all right. Make that G. First, I'm going to give you all the chords, and then I'll go back and tell you how to make them. All right, G, make that first G a G, add nine, A, D, D, nine, A, D, D, nine, cross out the D and make it a G major nine, G capital M, A, J, nine. Cross out the D minor and make it a G9. Now, if you don't want to play the nines, you can skip the add nine. You can make it a major seven, and you can make it a G7. But I'm going to show you how to make these, and you're going to go, ooh, I like how that sounds. Second line. Cross out the C and replace it with A minor or A minor seven. Second measure, the C minor can be a C minor 6, or you can play A minor 7 flat the 5th. It's the same chord. And usually what I say is a 6th chord, eh, you should probably not play that because it's going to sound bad. In this case, it sounds fine because they're minor chords. 
So you're still going to get that minor tonality. If you play both of the A minor 7 flat 5 and the C minor 6, you're going to hear the same, the same tonality. So you're going to play the one that's most comfortable for you. The G chord, no changes. Woohoo! <laughs> the C minor at the end of line 2. Again, C minor 6 or A minor 7 flat 5. Remember, I'm going to go back and we'll, we'll tell you what all those notes are. Third line, the D7 is fine. Now you're going to copy what you did in line 1. The G is a G add 9, A, D, D, 9. Cross out the D and make it a G major 9, Gorilla major 9. Cross out the D minor and make it a G9, Gorilla 9. And you're going to hear what a nice little walk down chord progression that is. Let's go to the fourth line. The C, cross it out, make it an A minor or an A minor 7. Second measure, the C minor can be a C minor 6 or an A minor 7 flat the fifth. The G is perfectly fine all by itself. The C minor can be a C minor 6 or it can be an A minor 7 flat 5. Like line 2. That's line, f the same as line 2, exactly correct. Exactly the same as line 2. Yep, good observation. The first ending. The D7 is fine. The E minor is fine. Cross out the B and replace it with E minor major 7. Ooh, what is that? Well, you write it E little m capital M A J 7. And the next the last chord in that on that page make it an E minor 7. Just put a 7 on that one. Now let's go to the top of page 2. A7 B minor 7 flat the 5th. You're going to make that B minor a B minor 7 flat the 5th. I'll tell you how to play it once we get done with all this. And the E7 is absolutely fine right where it is. Let's go to the second line. A minor, you may put a 7 on it. A minor 7. And the D7 is fine exactly the way it is. Second ending, D7, no changes. Third line, E minor for the first measure, just as it's written. Cross out the B and replace it with E minor major 7. E little m capital M-A-J 7. Third measure, the E minor, put a 7 on it. And I'm going to show you what, what a nice little walk down that one is too. Next measure, A7 is good. Fourth line, make the B minor a B minor 7 flat the 5th. B minor 7 flat the 5th. The E can be an E7. The A minor can be an A minor 7. And then the D is a D7, that's fine. The last line, the G is perfect just as the G. The A minor can be an A minor 7. Cross, oh, the C minor can be a C minor 6 or an A minor 7 flat 5. And then we're going to end with a G. So we're in the key of G. And now let's figure out how to play all these chords. Uh -huh. So I'm going to turn off the rhythm and just put on easy. G add 9, right from the beginning. Three fingers, G, A, B. G, A, B. And if you look in your window, it'll say G add 9. The second chord, G major 9. Keep your fingers in the exact same spot and add an F sharp. 
Oh, so your notes are F sharp, G, A, B. But all you got to do is just add that F sharp. Read your window to make sure you got it right. And then the next one, G9, is F, G, A, B. So you're going to take your F sharp off and you're going to switch it to an F. Oh. So it's actually a lot easier to play than it is to look at them. Because <laughs> you're just taking one finger, you're adding a finger, and then you're changing that same finger. Again, that's G, A, B for a G, add nine. The G major nine, you're going to add the F sharp. F sharp, G, A, B. The G nine, you're going to change the F sharp to an F. F, G, A, B. Pretty cool. A minor seven. If you want to leave your fingers right here and play a full fingered chord, go for it. If you're playing the easy play, it's going to be pinky on C and then G and A. If you'd rather play, keep your hand kind of right in this position, it would be E, G, A, C. That way you can just leave your hand right here. If you want to play down here, that's fine, doesn't matter. Then an A minor seven flat fifth, okay? If you're in this position here, you're just gonna pick up your pinky and put it on an E flat. So your notes are E flat, G, A, C. If you put the C on the bottom, it's a C minor six, but it still has that same tonality Here's the difference. A minor 7 flat 5, C minor 6. All I'm doing is putting the C on the bottom. It really depends on which one's easiest for you to get your fingers to. The tonality stays the same, so you don't have to worry about it. It's going to stay in that minor tone. Did you say the um, no, um, letters one more time? Of the yes, note? for an A minor 7 flat 5, it's E flat, G as in gorilla, a as in alligator, and C as in chicken. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then if the chicken goes on the bottom, it becomes a C minor 6, and you can just read it differently in the window. Oh. Yes. Question? All right. It's the same. That's going to be the same. Every time we have an A minor 7 flat 5 or C minor 6, it's going to be your choice as to which which one is easier to get to from the chord you just came from? All right, line three, you've got that same progression. G add nine, which is G, A, B. Then the G major nine is adding the F sharp. The G nine is changing the F sharp to an F, F, G, A, B. Don't forget to read your window to make sure you've got the right one. Everything's a repeat. Then you've got that A minor 7. Then you've got the A minor 7 flat 5, which is just adding that E flat. Don? Yes. OK, I, I, I'm lost now. Uh-oh. <laughs> I second, am in, I am in line 4. Oh, my goodness, line 4. Now. Line three is an exact duplicate of line one. So if you've got everything for line one, okay. you've got everything for that chord progression in line three. Okay, all right. Same okay. thing with line two. If you've got everything in line two, line four is an exact duplicate. Oh, okay. So you can just copy it down. Okay. Let's go to the first ending, line five. You have an E minor in the second measure, which is E and G. Then you have an E minor major seven. The major seven is the D sharp or the E flat. So you only have to just add that. So now you have a three fingered chord, E flat, E, G. Then you have an E minor seven. So you're gonna pick up that E flat and change it to a D. Again, it's just a nice little walk down. E minor, E minor, major seven, 
E minor 7. It's easier to play than it is to write. <laughs> yeah. All right. So let's go to the top of the next page. A7 is easy. That's G and A. Now here's the one that seems that seems really hard, but it's not. B minor 7 flat 5. It is a four-fingered chord, but we use it actually quite a bit with the added chords. And the easiest way, I think, to play it is B butterfly, D dinosaur, F fish, and A alligator. It's all white notes, and you're skipping white notes. Now, if you invert it, now it becomes a D minor 6. Yeah, it's OK, but it's not quite the same. So I actually like it just putting my pinky down on that B flat. I'm, I'm sorry, it's a B natural. I'm sorry. It's all white keys. B, D, F, A, B minor 7 flat 5. Then the E7 is the D and E. Second line, your A minor 7. You should know that already. That's C, G, and A. Or if you're playing the full fingered chord, it would be E, G, A, and C. Do not put the C on the bottom in this case, because now it's a major chord. If you're going to play it with the C on the bottom, just play C, G, and A, just the three fingers. You have to watch that, because the Lowry, because it's on an easy play system, sometimes it's going to play whatever the root of the note is, the bass note, and it's going to turn, the, turn it into a different tonality, and you don't want to do that. Don? Yes. Would that then mean a, a, M, uh, a minor 7 would be E, G, A, C, or mm -hmm. just the G, A, C? Or, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Very good. Either one. Okay. And again, it just depends on where you're going after that. Sure. If you're going to that A minor 7 flat, the fifth, then it's just so easy to move a pinky. So sure. a lot of things about chords are about where are you going? Where did you come from and where are you going? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. the, so okay. the second line, no changes. Those are all good. A minor 7, you know what it is. D7, D7, you know what those are. Um, the third line, there you have that E minor, the same thing as what you had in the very beginning of the first ending. You have an E minor, E and G, an E minor major 7, which is adding the E flat, and an E minor 7, which is adding the D. Then you have an A7, G and A. Then you have that B minor 7 flat the fifth. One more time. B, D, F, A. It's actually not too hard to play. Going to an E7, D and E. A minor 7 is C, G, A. D7. Then you have a G. A minor 7. Either a C minor 6, which you just add the... If you're doing a C minor 6 from this three-fingered chord, all you got to do is add the third finger to the E flat. If you're playing the A minor 7 up here, all you got to do is change the pinky to an E flat. So... Don't ready you now. It's, it's not about what chord is easiest to play. It's about how easy is it, is it to play coming from another chord and going to the next chord. That's what chord progressions are about. That's why when we're giving you these extra ones, there's sometimes, it, depending on how you play the chord, it's going to be easier to play it in one position or another. You know, I don't, when I was I'm still having level, trouble with that, that E minor major 7. Can you give E minor me that? major 7? Okay. Yes. It's E flat or D sharp, whichever one you want to notate, E and G. Oh, all right. E flat, E and G? Yes. E flat, E and G is E minor, major seven. 
It's not, it's not that the chord is major, it's that the seven is the major seven. And remember the rules for major sevens are the letter minus one. So the letter is E, so minus one is E flat or D sharp. But it's an E minor, so it's an E and a G, the letter plus three, and then the major seven is minus one. Okay. It's all oh. mathematical. So what are the notes again? I'm sorry. <laughs> e flat, E, G, for an E minor major seven. Okay. Now you kept throwing me when you kept throwing that D in there. See, well, the e, D is the E minor seven. E flat and a D flat. Yeah, well, it's the same. Yeah, E flat, E flat and D sharp are yes. the same. Yes. Whichever one is the forward. easiest for you to to notate or to visualize in your head. Use the one that's the easiest for you to see in your head. If you write it as a D sharp and you're not recognizing it, change it to an E flat. Got it. And what are the notes again for the C minor six? C minor six, the same notes as in the A minor seven flat five, but in a different position. It's C, E flat, G, A. Thank you. Now, if you take that C and put it on top, now it's the A minor seven flat, the fifth. So again, it's what chord did you just come from and which position did you play it in and what chord are you going to? So that's how you, how you determine which hand position to use. It's all about, you just wanna change maybe one, maybe two fingers. So it makes changing chords easier. And so you look at all these chord changes and go, oh, this looks very scary. And then when you actually start playing it, you realize how easy it is to just move one finger. That's the secret to good chord playing. Don, before you continue, would you mind repeating the last line on page 148? Yes, last line on page 148, the beginning of the first ending. Yes. Your D7 is good. Your E minor is good. Change the B to an E minor major seven, E little m, capital M A J seven. And those are the notes, E flat, E, and G. Oh. Just three fingers. Mm -hmm. And then the E minor seven is D, E, and G. So you're just changing one. You're going from E minor, add the E flat, pick up the A flat and change it to D. And it just makes a nice little walk down. Okay, thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Now, remember, if you don't want to use my chords or you want to learn one new one, just learn one, you will be 100% successful. If you hear something that you like, like you like the... You like the G add nine to the major nine to the G nine because you only have to move one finger. Just learn those three and be done with it and play the rest of the chords the way they are. You do not have to do everything that I'm telling you to do. What I'm doing is I'm pushing your limits. I'm pushing you to try new things in the music and push the buttons on your instrument. So you're learning the two things. You're learning how to find new chords, one, just learn one. Yeah, and we're learning how to find things on your organ. And several of you figured out how to find fade today. That was a wonderful thing. Yeah. Yep. Very good. Okay, I also have fingering for you if you wish. So those of you who don't need fingering, thanks so much for coming. I enjoy this class so much. So much. I love all these 70s songs. I love all the songs. I really do. I have a good Dawn, time. Dawn, didn't you say you were going to give us some other notes at the last line? Oh, yes, I am. Yep. Thank you for that. I'm going to give you the full fingered notes at the end here. Thank you. I forgot to do that, Connie. Um, under the G for the word way, you're going to put a D on the fourth line, dinosaur, and a B butterfly on the third line, G, D, B. Under the G, in the next measure where the chord changes to A minor, you're going to change those bottom notes to E elephant in the top space and C chicken on the third space. So you're going to be holding the G with your pinky, G, E, C. 
Next measure where the chord changes to a C minor, you're still holding the G, you're going to change your bottom notes to E flat, elephant flat on the top lot space, top space, and C on the third space. G, E flat, C, and then in the last, the last measure, it goes back to the G chord, so you're going to go back to D dinosaur on the fourth line and B butterfly on the third line. Thank you, I forgot to give you those. And you're just going to hold that G with your pinky and you're going to change. You're just going to change those other two notes underneath. Or as was also mentioned, you could put on AOC for the last preset and then it'll change every time you change a chord. It will do that as well. Uh, all by itself. So either way, this just gives you a little more of a challenge. Why? Because um, I can't. What, what song are we doing next week? Next week, we're going to turn the page. We're going to do It's Too Late. Carol King. Yeah. <laughs> Stayed in bed all morning just to pass the time. Good song. Yep. Just going in order. Every now and then we'll skip one, but not always. Not, not too often. All right, so go to the beach, have a fabulous day, go play your organ, have a wonderful, wonderful day, and um, the rest of you, you need fingering, it's here. Don't forget, I'm going to put on Patreon the intro and your preset arrangement so that you can push buttons and learn things about what is on my instrument, and that's important, just as important as learning the music. Also, don't forget about the 1 o'clock recording workshop. And it will not only, not only be about recording to your sticker disc, it will also be how to make a CD. We're not going to spend a lot of time on that because not everybody has that feature. And it will also be how to save presets, embellishing on, on what Robert already started at the beginning of the month. All right, here we go with fingering. Pencils out. B3, C4, D5, 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 D5. D5, C4, B3, C4. D5, D5, C4, B3. Second line, G1, G1, C4, C4, B3, G2, D1, D1, E flat 2, E flat 2, G1. Circle it. That is a thumb tuck. D5, G1. Third line, A2. B3, C4, D5, 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 D5. C4, B3, C4, D5, D5, C4, B3, B3. Fourth line, G1. G1, C4, C4, B3, G2, D1. Now you should be just repeating because music repeats. You're just repeating things you did in the upper lines. D1, E flat 2, E flat 2. Here's that thumb tuck, G1, circle it because that's your thumb tuck, D5, G1, first ending, which is the last line on that page, A2, G1, B2, E3, watch it, that's a long stretch, F sharp 4, G5, B2, or you can switch to a 3 right away. I switched to a 3 here. Little check mark, B3, B3, because my fingers are short. So I did a 5 down to a 2, and then I switched to the 3 in the next B. So life is a 2 
is is a 3. Run is a 3. A2, G1, A2, top of the page, A2. Or whatever finger gets there first to make it nice and smooth. E5, B4, A3, watch it, that is a long stretch, G sharp, 2. Or you could have made the A a 1 and crossed the 2 over to the G sharp. Again, depending on how your fingers like to flow. D5 at the end of the line, C4, the G is either a 3 or a 1, then the F sharp is a 2. And if you used a 1, it's going to be a crossover. Your pickup notes are B3, C4. A2 in the second ending, G1. All right, here we go to the third line. B2, E3, F sharp 4, G5. B2, check mark, B3, B3, just like we did before, or if you can reach down to the 3 right away, I just think you should do the stars nice and smoothly, and then you can switch fingers. A2, G1, A2, A2, E5, B, I'm sorry, the D is a 4. A is a 3 or a 1. G sharp 2. And if you made it a 1 before, make it a crossover with a circle. Check mark in the rest. D2, C1, D2, E3, F sharp 4, G5. And you want that G to be a 5 so that you can, you can change your fingers between those three fingers to play those notes underneath. Got it? Yep. yep. Beautiful song. I've always loved this song. And if you can find, if, if you don't like the, the sci-fi sci and goblin sounds that I found, look for other ones. Try to find that underwater sound. And if somebody comes up with something really cool, let me know, because I'd be very interested to know what you find. You guys are the best. Thank you so much. Thank Hopefully you, we'll see you Friday. I will uh -huh. teach Friday. I will teach the Friday morning class as well on Zoom, and then at one o'clock will be the the workshop. Okay. okay. Very good. Thank you. Dawn, awesome. I need to come in and see you. Okay. Um, what does your schedule look like today? I'm free until five. I do have to. I'm going to talk to another customer. I've got a, 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 an email talk to, with another customer, an email chat. But otherwise, other than that, I'm free until 5. Okay. I'll see you this afternoon. Okay. Thanks. Yep. Bye, Bye Dawn. Thank you Bye. so much. Bye. You guys are awesome.